Hello and welcome back. We're continuing our saga into advanced uh, fine-tuning topics and today we're talking about quantization or QLOR. Specifically, we're going to go out, talk about QLOR. So QLOR consists of two parts, LORA, which we've already discussed, and the goal of LORA is to reduce the number of trainable parameters uh, that are required uh, during fine-tuning and this is done through matrix decomposition. And the second part is quantization, which reduces the memory required for each parameter. And we're going to talk about the second part. So first, let's talk about floating point number data types. So here we've got a um, float32, which is a data type used to store um, numbers with decimal points. And here's another one. Here's float16, which is also used to store numbers with decimal points. So for example, if you want to store the value of one third, one divided by three, uh, the closest you can get, the, the maximum precision you can get with float32 is this value. And that's a representation of one third. It's the closest you can get to one third. And whereas with a uh, float16, the closest you can get is this value. And that's just because there's memory limitation uh, to how much precision this uh, float16 can store. So even though we lose some precision with float16, uh, the preference with large language model training is to use float16 because even though it's less precise, it requires less space. So 16 bits is equal to two bytes. And if you multiply that by one billion parameters in, in a very small large language model, that equals to two gigabytes. Uh, if you multiply that by a hundred billion in a <laughs> decent size large language model as of today, then that gives you 200 gigabytes. Um, and that's that's a lot of space. Now, it's not about space on the hard drive. Indeed, hard drives these days are terabytes and terabytes. But this is more about space that's required for training, tuning, or inference on the GPU memory, also called VRAM, which is a v video random access memory. So uh, the GPU memory is quite limited. For example, consumer GPUs uh, don't have that much. And uh, to, uh, as of today, they're between 4 and 48 gigabytes of VRAM. And the model requires 200 gigabytes. That becomes very hard for consumers. And even for businesses, um, that's a lot of space, a lot of uh, GPU memory that is required. So how can we um, optimize this? Well, uh, we will use quantization. First, we'll talk about ordinary quantization, and we'll, then we'll talk about QLOR quantization. So what is quantization? Quantization is a method to transform a uh, continuous number into uh, discrete numbers. So for example, if we have our weights and they're distributed uh, somewhere between min and maximum, there are 100 billion weights. We also call them 100 billion parameters. Um, and if we're using float 16, then each one, as we discussed, takes 16 bits, and that ends up to be 200 gigabytes of space. But now what we're going to do is we're going to quantize them. We're going to say, let's, uh, for argument's sake, that they're between minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.5. We're going to split this range into 16 equal bins. And each val all of the values, whatever bin they fall into, whatever bin a, a given parameter falls into, a given weight falls into, it's going to be replaced uh, with the midpoint of this bin. So replaced or rounded, you can call this whatever you like, but basically rather now than, rather than having 100 billion parameters, all of which can be somewhere between 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, now we're just going to have still 100 billion parameters, but each one of them will only be able to take one of these 16 different values, depending on which bin it falls into. And now all of a sudden, instead of having to store this in uh, float 16, we can get away with storing this with just four bits of data. There's our bits. Each one is a one or zero. Why four? Well, because two to the power four equals 16, and we have exactly 16 uh, bins that we need to codify. So let's look at an example. Let's say this uh, this code, 0, 1, 0, 0. And by the way, this is just going to be a, an example for visual purposes. It doesn't have to be exactly how you choose to do it or how they did it in the research paper. This is just to illustrate that four bits is enough to codify these 16 values. So we're going to use the bits as indication left or right. So the first bit is a zero. That means we take all of our 16 bins, we split it in half, and we say, okay, zero means left. That means it's the, the bin that we're looking for is somewhere on the left side. 
Then the second uh, value is a one. So we take what we found so far and we split it again in half and we say, okay, our bin is now on the right of this of this uh, um, range that we've de we've identified. Now we're going to take the new range we've identified and look at the third value, which is a zero, which means left, and then the fourth value, which is a zero, which also means left. And so we go that way. We have identified that the value or the parameter that we're working with that we're looking at specifically this time is in that bin. And because we're um, replacing every bin with just that midpoint, then we know that that parameter is now minus 0 0.075. In this way, of course, we use we lose some precision, but the good news is that we are saving space. Now, instead of using 16 bits to store every parameter, we only need four bits of memory. And that's 0 0.5 bytes multiplied by 100 billion. That means 50 gigabytes of memory. So we've reduced uh, by four the, um, or four times we've reduced the number of memory required. And this is much more manageable. Um, this is all great. This is, this is how uh, quantization works. In QLORA, we have to take one more thing into consideration. And that is uh, that large language model weights are normally distributed. This is uh, considered to be a well-known fact, and in the paper they uh, do a thorough job at um, proving this empirically and showing that weights of a large language model are normally distributed. So in this case, if we were to do what we just discussed and we were to take these equally distant bins and apply them to a normal distribution, then um, that wouldn't be ideal because in the middle over here, in the middle of the normal distribution, um, there would be a lot of a lot of values, a lot of parameters would fall into each bin. Whereas on the sides, on or like on the on the tails of the distribution, uh, there would be very few parameters falling to, into each bin. So we have to adjust our bins, and that's what they do in the paper. Uh, they propose a new uh, data type to store um, values of decimal points, which is kind of like what we discussed, but the bins are adjusted so that they're not equidistant anymore, but rather they have equal, um, rather than having equal space, spacing, these distant, these bins have equal areas. So they have equal areas under the normal distribution, meaning that the same number of parameters for or same number of weights falls into each one of these bins. And that allows us to not waste um, bins on the tails of the normal distribution, um, and also at the same time, keep as much precision as we can in the middle part of the normal distribution where we have most of the weights, the, most of the weights fall in there. And so these bins have equal area than, rather than equal spacing, meaning that each bin contains equal a number of parameters. And this is the most information theoretically optimal way of approaching this problem of quantizing um, weights of a large language model, which we know are normally distributed. Information theoretic op theoretically optimal means that with the information that we have, this is the best way we can come up with, the most efficient way for storing these values. And that's pretty much it. So uh, they use 16 bins, which equals to four bits. You can use a different value. You can use five bits, six bits. That increases the number of bins and, of course, increases precision. You can use less. You can use three bits, two bits. But in the paper, they show that um, 16, uh, so that four bits is the optimal number. Below four at three bits, uh, there, there starts to be instability in the model, whereas four bits, five bits, six bits, uh, they all perform quite if efficiently, uh, quite similarly. So they choose. Uh, so they say that four bits is a great uh, starting point, great number. Um, yeah. So that's how QLOR quantization works. There's a link to the paper if you'd like to dive a bit deeper. Uh, keep in mind that it is quite an advanced uh, paper. There's quite a lot of technical stuff. So if you'd like to, rather than reading the paper watch or listen to the paper, there's a, a YouTube video with one of the authors of the paper actually walking us through the paper. So you can find this uh, on this channel of the London, London Machine Learning Meetup. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning and I look forward to seeing you there.